Yeah, thank you, Bala sir. Uh, I hope I am audible and the screen is visible to all. Yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So, uh, first of all, thank you, Dr. Bala, for uh, giving this invite and to share our experience and how we are doing uh, yeah, this image uh, without. So, actually, the topic, uh, the title was Is Image Guidance Mandatory? And I think this is a wrong title, and the actual title should be Is Fluoroscopic Guidance Mandatory? Because I am not saying that every one of us is doing <coughs> guidance. And I think a lot of uh, people who are talking about fluoroscopy are talking from their experience where they have landed into complications where before the ultrasound modality actually evolved. Now ultrasound modality has evolved a lot as Tushar was mentioning. So we can track the guide wire up to brachycephalic vein from above and then from below in the right atrium as well as SVC we can see. And then obviously IVC if it is there we can see the guide wire also. So only remaining portion is middle part of 4 to 5 centimeters which is not visible by ultrasound otherwise it is very well visible. So, uh, uh, I would also like to give a disclaimer here. So, our center is a very high volume center. So, we are we are putting daily 7 to 8 tunnel dialysis catheter every day, left, right, all. Uh, we have a CEM under our own department. Uh, so, it is available to us 24 into 7. But despite that, 75% of our catheters are without fluoroscopy and only 25% of our catheters are uh, with fluoroscopy. And the reason is mainly because of logistic reason. So, we have fluoro, but we don't have a staff, you know, we don't have technician, we don't have nurse to operate that fluoro machine round the clock. And uh, whenever the machine, uh, so machine is available, technicians are not available, so we can and use fluoro only when technician is available otherwise we can't handle that machine so having said that uh, we move on to the talk so we all know that uh, these are the tunnel dialysis catheters are indispensable part of our uh, practice uh, practically speaking we have all talked about fistula and other things they are the ideal vascular access but despite that even in developed centers we have seen majority of our patients uh, starting dialysis with tunnel dialysis catheter so image guided is essential so ultrasound is essential there is no doubt about it that ultrasound uh, we should not be doing any blind puncture or blind catheter insertion however in addition to ultrasound uh, we can we sh we can use fluoroscopy because what <coughs> the guidelines say is that you should place catheters under image guidance now this the best modality of image guidance is obviously fluoroscopy because you can track through and through however uh, fluoroscopy if not available or logistic region so as i have said fluoroscopy there is ease of placement lesser complication you can track the guide wire you can track the catheters however there are a lot of uh, reasons uh, why people are not uh, putting these catheter under fluoroscopy and two main reasons have already been highlighted are availability and the logistical concern. So, uh, so basically, uh, also there is paucity of head-to-head -head comparison. You know, or everyone is saying that this is gold standard, gold standard. Agreed, but the data uh, that how much is the complication rate? Suppose we are not using fluoroscopy and we are using ultrasound guided, say for example, or anatomical landmarks about uh, dialysis catheters is actually not there in literature. So the questions were to what should we do if we have non-availability of fluoro? And patient requires tunnel dialysis catheter. So, so Dr. Vanna said this is not emergency. Okay, fine. This is not an emergency, but this patient is still required tunnel dialysis catheter and you are at a center where, where there is no fluoro availability at all. There is no cath lab at all and this patient requires uh, tunnel dialysis catheter. So the basic idea was does non-availability of fluoro preclude these procedures or we have other alternatives which can uh, at to an extent replace uh, fluoroscopy with a reasonable certainty. So what literature have said that we can put uh, catheters, whether it is central venous catheters or dialysis catheters with the use, uh, without fluoroscopy, with, with the use of various techniques, like there is an anatomical landmark, and I'll be talking about this. Then we can use ultrasound visualization of catheter tip in the re, uh, right atrium, which again, I'll be showing you. Then people have used agitated saline uh, uh, and the swirl uh, technique, uh, which uh, I'll be mentioning in brief, and then cardiac monitor and interrupt procedure ECG where you have variations in P waves as the guide wire goes into RA.
uh, after touching yes and no. So all these all these modalities have their advantages as well as disadvantages. So not going into detail about advantages and disadvantages of these techniques. But what I uh, want to show you is that COVID was in uh, was something which happened later on but before covid actually there was data where people have shown that we can put this tunnel dialysis catheter without using fluoroscopy with the help of various modalities so this was the paper which was published in 2015 where they have uh, inserted 102 cath uh, catheter in patients uh, catheters using ECG, intracavitary ECG method, and they have said that they were successful in 139 and catheter malposition was seen in 6 out of 142. So if you calculate percent, it, come, it comes to around 3% uh, or 4% or whatever. So in vast majority of cases, there was a successful placement of catheter. Then this was the agitated saline. Again, uh, this was paper uh, before COVID in 2019. And with the use of this technique, the 100% percent success rate in catheter positioning. So there was no incidence of catheter malposition, no incidence of catheter malfunction. So again, this data shows you that uh, with reasonable certainty, we can put these catheters. And this is the uh, agitated saline or what we call as rapid atrial swill technique. So here you, you use the help of ultrasound and specifically the eco probe. This is the subcostal view and this is the five chamber view. So here you can see this is the right atrium and right ventricle. So what you can see is this. sometimes you can see directly the tip of catheter in the right atrium. Like you can see in this view, this is the five chamber view. Uh, directly we are seeing the tip of catheter in the right atrium. So what we, uh, the next step is 10 ml of saline, which is kind of agitated. So you mix it up in within the syringe or you can mix it up in the bowel also. And then immediately push uh, into the catheter. And within one second, this kind of swirl or uh, ecogenicity of saline should come and this should happen within one or at max two seconds because if it occurs later on that it means that your catheter is not in right atrium it's up in the maybe in SVC or somewhere even higher up so the catch is it should happen within one to two seconds right so similarly here you can see this is the catheter tip and immediately within one second so again this is study uh, which was in 2021 they have shown 100% successful placement of catheters and this was during covid uh, uh, and i think this was 25 patients again 100 uh, percent success rate with the use of ultrasound and anatomical landmarks the debate in our whatsapp group started after this paper from germany so germany is not a underdeveloped country they don't have resource limitation but it's still uh, they have presented this data that why uh, they have uh, like dr bala was asking why they have actually inserted without so there may be many reasons so and they have used predominantly ultrasound guided uh, um, ultrasound guidance and in some cases they have used intracardiac electrocardiography or ecg and what they have shown is that there was 134 patients 87 were right side so 13 percent were left side so they have put left side also without fluoro and this is what we are also doing we are also putting left side also without fluoro as i've said previously so catheter successful placement was in 98 percent and again just like previous study 94 were with optimal positioning and right atrium so six percent were in maybe slightly higher up or slightly lower up and this was accompanied by an editorial by pallavi and tushar uh, where they have discuss various options and what are the advantages and disadvantages a wonderfully written paper you should all read about that paper so what we did is that we did an, uh, an RCT actually uh, this was started uh, after COVID because there was limitation of data as I have said earlier so to generate rega data regarding safety and feasibility of inserting TCC with or without fluoroscopy so as I have said this was a randomized trial uh, where we, we we use these two techniques so without fluoro we use predominantly anatomical landmark and I'll show you how we have done it and in few cases we also use ultrasound eco probe and you can actually very wonderfully demonstrate uh, a, a tip position in right atrium. So as I've said earlier, if you are using ultrasound properly, till brachiocephalic vein, you can track your guide wire easily. 
there are ultrasound probe now available uh, uh, convex probe which can go even be below uh, your brachiocephalic vein and can show you upper svc also and then from below if we, if you are going in the subcostal view you can easily visualize uh, your ra so if you are going from above and below so uh, you are covering almost entire uh, length except for the maybe 4 to 5 cm of svc uh, 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 using this technique so this was a single center and and uh, I'll show you uh, how we were doing it. We have excluded, so this was predominantly right-sided. As a part of this study, we have not included our left side patients. We have excluded, these are the standard kind of exclusion patients. So previous uh, tunnel dialysis catheter insertions were excluded. Uh, previous non-tunnel dialysis catheter, if they had, they were included, right? So uh, this was approved by ethics committee. So again, there was a question on WhatsApp that uh, will ethics committee approve such kind of a study? Of course, they will approve because this is real world study. We all are doing without fluoroscopy. So we have to justify we have to give them the data that there is actually data where people have done without fluoroscopy so there is no problem in getting an ethics approval we have also registered this in our ctri uh, so there were two groups as i have said earlier now coming to main point that anatomical landmarks and in anatomical landmarks this sternum plays a very major role and especially the two things especially plays a very major role one is this sternal angle which is also known as angle of louis and second is this ziffy sternum, which is at the base of heart. So if we if we talk about anatomy, in vast majority of cases, of course, there will there may be anatomical variations in in some cases. So in vast majority of cases, this angle of Louis or sternal angle corresponds to carina. And roughly four to five centimeters below this uh, sternal angle lies uh, your RA. And this GF sternum corresponds to your base of heart, right? So base of heart is here. So right atrium is here. So you can get a rough idea from your anatomical landmark. So what, what is the proper location of your, uh, uh, of your right atrium? So how we are doing it? So what you do is that you, you so external angle, uh, you can easily palpate because it is the most prominent uh, structure on the chest. You go approximately five to six centimeter below external angle, which is roughly three fingers. So we go three fingers below external angle and we go four, four fingers above this, this sternum which is the base of heart and usually if we do three centimeter from above and four centimeter from below usually they come exactly side by side there will be only few selected patients where there will be a gap and in those cases especially in males what you can do is that there are two nipples you can draw an arbitrary kind of line and this is again a line where you can take the help and you are coming three fingers down from here and five fingers above so if you take all these three things in vast I, I, in my experience, almost 99% of cases have a close proximity. So you can exactly get what should be your tip of insertion, right? So if you use this anatomical landmarks. So having uh, taken this anatomical landmark, so what you do is that uh, I'll show a brief video. So what you do is that you under ultrasound guidance, you puncture as you are doing in any other case. So under ultrasound guidance, you are puncturing the IJV and then you are putting a guide wire into the into the vein. You have to be careful that you are putting the guide wire slowly without and, and you should stop as soon as you are uh, getting any kind of resistance or you, uh, you know, any kind of problem. The guide wire insertion is the most important step. I would say it should go as smoothly as possible. So once your guide wire is inside, as I've said that you can track your guide wire till break, break your Catholic vein. And then you put this catheter. So this is the tunnel dialysis catheter. So this is some approximately your external angle. So you put the catheters three, uh, keeping the tip three centimeter below your external angle. And then you make a, uh, uh, this, uh, your entry point you keep and then make a smooth curve and you mark your exit side. So this will be your approximate kind of exit side. So you keep like this because your curve also should be smooth. The tip should be approximately five to six centimeters. So you have already done from below and from above and you have marked the tip position. And after marking the tip position, uh, you, you keep this catheter like this and you mark your exit side. So 
yeah so you can get a better view still the tip is uh, somehow hidden by this uh, wrapping so if you if you some here somewhat here is my menu, uh, external angle so approximately five to six centimeter below is my tip position and then i have placed the catheter over the skin making a smooth curve i have marked the exit side after you have done this the remaining procedure is the standard kind of procedure there is no difference like you will make a tunnel you will insert the dilator and you will do the sheath there is no difference uh, because once your guide wire is secured uh, the, there is usually no problem in insertion of uh, dilators and sheath now once you have inserted uh, a catheter you can take further help of ultrasound as i mentioned so you use eco probe and you use subcostal view so here you can see that subcostal view that pointer should be up and it should be directed towards the left shoulder here is the ra and this is the rv so you will find if your kit tip position is okay in majority of cases unless that patient is very obese where you can't find RA properly you will find an ecogenic tip in within this RA and further you can use this agitated saline technique as I have mentioned earlier we are not using that agitated saline because it is a lot of fallacies there as I mentioned if the catheter tip is higher up also again you can get this this ecogenicity of the saline so the best is that you will see ra uh, your tip in ra so here you can see that this is the ecogenic tip which we are getting in ra so this is ra this is rv subcostal view and here is the ecogenic tip so you have confirmed that your tip is lying in ra so uh, then again there is a modification of subcostal view uh, which is known as bicable ziphoid view so here whatever so you put an eco probe like you are uh, uh, looking at the ivc and then you gradually you know tilt the probe towards head so if you tilt your probe towards head you will uh, in in a particular window you will get this kind of image this is known as bicable view because here you are seeing both ivc as well as svc and in between there will be ra so you see there is ivc there is ra and there is svc so as i'll again demonstrate in this video so this is ivc here you are seeing svc and here is the ra again you are seeing a ecogenic catheter tip within ra so again you have confirmed that your catheter tip is in uh, your right atrium so using this ultrasound modality you can very well confirm that your catheter tip is in proper position and finally if, if you require you can uh, take an x-ray picture and confirm the catheter position so these are the few techniques uh, where uh, where you can use anatomical landmarks ultrasound uh, followed by x-ray if you required but if you are sure that you have seen the catheter tip in ra uh, usually it is in ra only because otherwise it will not be visible so very briefly because this paper is still under review and under consideration of publication i'll just give you the saline point so we have screened 153 patients and after excluding four patients who have a uh, previous history of tdc insertion we have excluded this four patient and randomized 149 patients so this randomization was in one is to one so still you see that number in fluoro was less because again because of logistic issue again the patients who were re actually randomized to uh, receive catheter under fluoroscopic guidance some of them were not able to get a fluoroscopic procedure done because of these concerns which i have mentioned earlier so 87 were done without fluoroscopy 62 were done uh, with fluoroscopy we studied at baseline and followed these patients for one month and uh, uh, this is again the same data so for a uh, mean age was 43 years approximately 60 percent were males and 40 percent were females and so we had achieved a successful catheter insertion in 100 percent of cases in our study and uh, these are the number of steps so ma uh, almost majority 87 percent were inserted within first uh, attempt and remaining were inserted within second attempt and we also done a ease of procedure as per visual analog score like person who was inserting our fellow who was inserting the catheter we have uh, asked them to grade like what do you think is the ease of procedure and this was again an equal kind of thing other complications were not different what was different was this procedure time again uh, because ours is a basic floor machine it has to be adjusted from yeah first you have to keep near the neck and then you bring it down and things like that so the adjustment took time and that is why the procedure time was 
more in fluoroscopic group as compared to non-fluoroscopic group. So this was the only significant finding which we have noticed in our study. Otherwise, uh, the catheter placement, everything was equally good. So uh, what we have said that this is first kind of a randomized study which have compared the mechanical i have not shown the uh, follow up data uh, by use of ultrasound guided insertion with or without fluoroscopy so ultrasound is a must if you are trained in using ultrasound if you can very well use ultrasound i think you can successfully insert your catheters without fluoroscopy also and uh, so we found that uh, this was more time I have already explained. It was more uh, uh, time consuming because I have said that because of aligning uh, in the correct posture and we also require experts for this. So apart from procedure time, other factors what uh, uh, were not different. And uh, so what... Uh, we have done is that this was in the randomized manner and we ha have tried to eliminate the potential confounding factors like uh, the site of insertion because we have used all right side only and excluded left side and recurrent insertion. In this study, the other two important things which, which are against kind of fluoro where people are scared lovers we have not studied like what was the radiation is exposure to the participant as well as to the staff and what was the cost because ours is a government funded hospital we don't charge anything extra for fluoroscopy so cost is not a no. us uh, so it should be the same but it, it it is not the same thing if we go to corporate hospital or in private sector the limitation is this is a single center study relatively small sample size, although if you compare to Germany studies, it will be still highest. Uh, as for, I, I have reviewed four or five studies where they have done non-fluoroscopic and our sample size is still highest. But again, uh, we can uh, recruit, we could have recruited more patients. This sample size was calculated as per the sample size formula. So, and uh, another limitation is that procedure was performed by trained nephrology fellows. So you first have to train them. All nephrology fellows have assisted at least 10 catheters uh, before they have started putting independently. So first you have to train them. Uh, after you have get a proper training like how to do puncture and how to do ultrasound help, how to take and what are the anatomical kind of uh, landmarks, then only you should start putting this uh, catheters. So uh, We'll, I'll conclude here that uh, uh, this what we have said in our study that this is a safe and effective method. We did not observe any additional advantage uh, in over and above the ultrasound technique. And the, the limitation is that this is only for right IJV and the first tunnel dialysis catheter insertion. So thank you very much for patient hearing and uh, uh, happy to take any divergent views on this. Thank you. Thank you, Manish.